Hello and welcome to The Curators, episode 109, the weekly podcast and YouTube series where I bring to you cool game and game-related crowdfunded projects from the Gamerati curated Kickstarter page, which you can find at kickstarter.com slash Gamerati. I'm Marcelo, and this show is transmitted as a podcast that you can find just looking for The Curators on your podcatcher, on your favorite podcatcher. And there is a video version at youtube.com slash Gamerati. I bring three projects this time. Let's start with the first one, which is Monsters in the City, Sins and Virtues. It's from Cowwood Publishing. That's their third project in the same series of monster books for your uh, D&D game. Their previous ones were Monsters of Feyland and Monsters of the Underworld and were very successful on Kickstarter. With this crowdfunding project, they are inviting you to enter the urban environment to find an epic battle between good and evil. Another member of the Alliance of the Griffin, a truth teller named Greta Goldheart, has just arrived to bolster the forces of good. That's the kind of reference that you would get if you had if you participated in the Kickstarter of the previous ones, but but this functions independently. We don't need to have purchased the previous ones to understand that because the story is being very well described in the new book. So, the book describes a city with seven districts. It will contain 100 new monsters for D&D 5th edition. A district page with additional lore and tables will begin each of the sections. There will be also uh, encounter tables, there will be adventure books, GM advice, event tables, location tables, CR, and creature types, creature type listings. Each district of the city will contain two legendary monsters unique to that location. Regular monsters in the book will include devils, demons, celestials, fey, and dead constructs, oozes, giants, and many types of humanoids. In fact, the book itself will come with three new races of humanoids for your players to choose from if they want. It's going to be a soft cover to begin with, and there is a stretch goal for a hardcore version. We're going to take a look at the stretch goal in a moment, at such goals in a moment. Uh, there is already a, they already have available a 22-page PDF of the book for, for you to, to sample, to see what kind of, like how professional, how, how competent, 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 how competent, how serious they are <laughs> on the production of these series of books for D&D. So rewards, according to the progress of the Kickstarter, will include a 5e adventure set in the city, an NPC book, and more stuff. The adventure will feature monsters from the book, and the NPC collection will have characters from the city setting, so you can populate it with people who are perfect for the setting. Most of the rewards items will also be included as add-ons, in a backer kit after the Kickstarter. So if you backed only the base game add later, you can add all the, the added stuff that has been released during the campaign. Add-ons will include, like there's a lot of stuff there. There, there are gonna be t-shirts, stickers, game master handbooks, and campaign setting books. Uh, let's take a look at some of the stretch goals. So with 40,000 Canada dollars, they add extra art. The art of this game is already amazing. I imagine how how better it's gonna be with more art. For th with 46,000 US dollars, no, sorry, 46,000 Canadian dollars, the book becomes hardcover. With 49,000, you will get PC subclasses and more maps. 52,000 custom end sheets is 56,000 custom d20 from q workshop right now the project is still has eight days to go as the recording of this i don't know when i'm going to release this episode because this week's a little weird but anyhow it goes all the way to the 13th of february 2020 uh they let's see here how much they need thirty-seven thousand 
Canadian dollars. Uh, Kawood Publishing is from Vancouver, Canada. All right, the the pledges, the the, the possibilities for you to support them with twenty U.S. dollars, which is sixteen. No, sorry, with twenty Canadian dollars, which is sixteen U.S. dollars, you get the PDF of the project. With thirty-seven Canadian dollars, twenty-eight U.S. dollars, you get the physical copy of Monsters of the City. With forty-five Canadian dollars or thirty-four U.S. dollars, you get the PDF of Monsters of the City, PDF of Monsters of Feyland, PDF of Monsters of the Underworld. You get everything they've done so far on this uh, this line. Uh, estimated delivery November twenty twenty. With fifty Canadian dollars, about thirty-eight U.S. Dollars, you get a physical copy and a PDF of Monsters of the City. 100, you get a PDF of Monsters of the City, five year, uh, one five year adventure, RP Generations comic book, and henchmen. And then there is a pledge with 150, uh, 150 Canadian dollars, 200 Canadian dollars, 250, 350. There's a lot of stuff here. Yeah. So, Monsters of the City, Sins and Virtue, Virtues by Kelwood Publishing from Canada uh, all the way to November, no, sorry, to 13th of February, not November, 2020. Second project. Second project is a deck building game. It is called Tortuga 2199. It's a deck building game where you build a crew, you hunt space monsters and try to become a pirate king in the planet of Tortuga. Uh, so it's being crowdfunded by Grey Fox Games. The games takes place on the criminal paradise of planet of Tortuga in the year 2199. Kind of very self-explanatory, right? <laughs> it's a two to four players game, but there is an add-on for a fifth player kind of a mini expansion for a fifth player. The game itself is pretty straightforward. It's like this. Each player starts they tur their turn with five cards in their hand, and then during their turn, a player plays a card from their hand and performs the action that is described in the card. Then played cards are moved face up to the player's discard pile, as with regular deck building games, and then cards that remain on your, play, uh, on your hand are also discarded. Uh, and then you draw five new cards to begin your new deck. Uh, so when you play a card, you can use what's in the card, or you can buy a new card using uh, credits in the game. You can move your spaceship on the board, because it's a, it's a tech building game, but there is a board where you move your ship. And uh, you can use your ship to collect minerals in each of the hexagons that where, where there's stuff to get. Uh, you can also uh, decide to hunt some creature or an outlaw or some monster that's, uh, that, that, that lives in Tortuga. Uh, every, every card of the, of the creature you're hunting has uh, the, the hunting difficulty rating, the name of them, uh, how many credits you get for, for capturing them. After you capture a hunted card, it becomes part of your deck, and then you can redeem the reward for getting that, that hunted, that creature. Uh, you can also reinforce sectors when you dominate some hexagons in the board. Uh, you can add more defense value to make it harder to be conquered by other players. And lastly, but not least, you can attack enemy ships on the board. So it's a deck building game, a card game, but with strong board game elements. All the art they're showing here is amazing, very modern, very sleek, very well done, like completely professional. And the game funds at 35,000 US dollars with 50,000 US dollars uh, they add an ex exclusive cards of a uh, character called Bartholomew Roberts. With 60,000, uh, the cover of the box will have a spot UV upgrade. With $7,000, they add another ship, an exclusive ship that will only be ava available for people on the Kickstarter because I assume that Grey Fox Games will uh, re later release the game uh, um, 
at retail, but there's some exclusive stuff, exclusive stuff here only for the Kickstarter backers. Uh, they uh, with eighty thousand dollars they will add plastic trays. Uh, ninety thousand dollars they will add uh, another exclusive card, any bunny. Then with ninety five, I think this one they haven't break yet. Ninety five thousand US dollars cards are upgraded to three hundred grams per square meter. Wow. And then another exclusive exclusive pair, uh, character at 110 US, 110,000 US dollars. Uh, the pledge levels are pretty straightforward. You can pledge for five US dollars to this level gets you everything. The donation level provides plus access to the to, to the PM after the campaign. It's 59 US dollars. You get a copy of the Kickstarter version of Tortuga 2199 with any expansions they have unlocked. And the uh, stretch goal. Oh, the, the expansion is the fifth player. And you also get all the stretch goals. And shipping will be collected after the campaign is over, which, which at least for me, it's always a good thing because I end up paying the gaming two installments uh, they are expecting to starting to ship anywhere in the world in August 2020 and then there's a French version and then there's uh, 79 US dollars every everything from the rogue level plus the exclusive mat oh there's an exclusive mat uh, then in French too you can get them in French and then for 240 dollars you get a retailer pledge where you get six editions of the Kickstarter exclusive version of Tortuga 2199. Uh, they, no, wow, they, uh, they, they, ju as I'm recording this, they went over their 95,000 uh, US dollars uh, goal. So another stretch goal unlocked. And this, this project also goes all the way to the 13th of February, 2020. Now, a third game I have for you. Uh, this one is Jurassic Parts. Jurassic Parts, not Parks. <laughs> you know, it's kind of obvious. There's a game with dinosaurs on Kickstarter. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to back it. <laughs> Jurassic Parts is being crowdfunded by 25th Century Games. It's their eighth Kickstarter. So, you know, they're pretty serious here. Jurassic Parks is an area enclosure and set collection tile game featuring dinosaur fossils. The game is designed by Kevin Lanzig, which is also responsible for Flashpoint Fire Rescue. And it is, is being illustrated by Andrew Balsley, who also illustrated Everdell, Everdell Pearl Book, Tapestry, and The River. Each player controls one archaeology student, in their first field assignment, over a dozen dinosaur fossils, over a dozen dinosaur fossils lie buried in a huge slab of rock. Time and the relentless forces of geology have mixed up the bodies, but that's a small problem for you and your team. It's up to you to dig up and organize the precious fossils from their rocky tomb. All of that is for the good of science and your own reputation. So be sure to claim the biggest and best fossils for yourself. So it's a tiny game. I, I wouldn't say tiny. It's a small box game. It's a, it's a the game with a small footprint. You have the sheets for all the students. Each one will be a character. There is a sheet for assembling the different dinosaurs because uh, the box comes, comes full with hexagons that you're going to make the, the, uh, the archaeology site. So they're all upside down. So you start, uh, actually don't even start digging. You start by putting your chisel marks on around an area you want to explore. And then you start uh, excavating. There are rocks, there are harder, that's going to make things a little harder for you. And then you turn, slowly turn those hexagons and you might find nothing or you might find some dinosaur bones. You collect them and hopefully you will be able to make, to assemble a complete or almost complete skeleton. That gives you more points. 
Uh, the game also works with amber, which is, uh, they're going to be represented by pieces of uh, plastic uh, that remind, and the ambers you can use for purchase stuff. And there's also, uh, let's see here, there are also items. The game will come with 45 fossil tiles, 6 paleontologist mats, uh, 20 amber, 72 chisel markers, uh, one for e one uh, a set of each of the six colors because you can play with up to six players. Six field guides that helps you to assemble the dinosaurs. One rule book, one field leader, uh, and ten item cards. Use amber to buy the items. The stretch goals they have here. Uh, there is a there there was a pre-launch goal uh, in which they created a NMO pin for the game. Then up uh, with, let's see here, upgraded thicker cards. They already got that. Upgraded punch board thickness. Line and finish on cards and mats, which is very cool. Uh, there's a stretch goal for a spot UV on the game box. It's kind of uh, fashionable nowadays. Then uh, they add a new item card, another new item card, another new item card. Another new line. <laughs> uh, then uh, there's a stretch goal for the tile upgrade, in which the tiles will also get a line and finish. Then more art, uh, a new dinosaur, a dinosaur, not dinosaur, stegosaurus. Then um, alternative art for the Spinosaurus, and they have more secret stretch goals to get here. Uh, the kicks. I, this is one of the most straightforward. I said the other one. The other Kickstarter project was straightforward. This one is pretty much. That's it. You have f uh, uh, twenty. You you have a pledge of twenty U.S. dollars. Sorry, twenty nine U.S. dollars or more. With that, you get a copy of the game with all applicable stretch goals, and you can add another copy just adding more. 20 more, 20, 29 US dollars more. Shipping will be charged after the campaign, the pledge manager, which is a good thing. <laughs> and estimated delivery is July 2020. That's it. You have a, there's also five, five US dollar retailer pledge, but it's not for us. That's, there's no, uh, it's not fancy. It's a very well done, very creative game. I love the theme. What can I say? I love dinosaurs. <laughs> and the project also ends on the 13th of February. Anyhow, that was Jurassic Parts. It's being crowdfunded by 25th Century Games. You have until the 13th of February to be part of it. All right, uh, that's it for another episode of The Curators. I hope you liked this. the, the smaller formats. We're, we're talking a little faster about some of the projects so I can add another project here. Let's see if I can do the same thing less next week. And uh, you can find our curated page, the only one exclusively about tabletop games at kickstarter.com slash gamerati. You can also email us at the curators at gamerati.com and through there you can tell me if you liked this projects I commented today and if you're backing any of them. The show notes for this episode and all our episodes are at the curators at gamerati.com <laughs> where you can also find the video versions or listen and subscribe to the podcast version. The curators can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher and Spotify. And that's it for me. Catch you up next time.